Hello, everyone. Uh, so this is, I think, the fourth session of Git um, Learnings, Git 101. I'm not sure what we're calling these lessons. I know that we've met with uh, Michael and I think Lauren um, to make merge requests and kind of uh, get a handle on what's happening uh, in the Git cycle. Um, so this time we're meeting, um, we've already successfully made a merge request uh, with Lauren. Um, so the goal of this 101 lesson, 104, I don't know how lessons work, uh, is to go over uh, the Git cycle. Now that we've seen a lot of these commands in action, kind of what is happening uh, with each one. Um, so I will share my screen. Oh, I'm, okay. Why isn't it letting me share? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see if that worked. There we go. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, so yeah, I've come up with a little diagram here um, that's like so beautiful. I know that just I should be on the design team, um, but it is really just a basic uh, kind of cycle. Um, and I've written the git commands uh, on the side here um, that we've seen throughout our studies. And I just kind of want to go through where they live on this cycle. Um, I also included system commands that you've worked with before, um, ls, pwd, cd. These are not Git commands. Um, anything that Git handles starts with the word Git. Um, so these are just kind of for navigating to and from files on your computer. Um, so I'm going to leave these out of the Git cycle. Um, but yeah, um, I just kind of wanted to talk about this cycle. So there are kind of two locations involved. There's your local machine. Uh, and then there's the GitLab repo that is remote. Um, that's the repo that all of us are working on and pushing to and has like this shared repository of all the code and just constant changes. And this is kind of managing this is what, make it, get, eh, what makes Git so like useful because um, so many of us are um, pulling or pushing and pulling from it. Um, so yeah, in this uh, cycle, I just wanted to kind of point out that we're constantly in a state of like pushing and pulling. Um, and all that we're doing in this cycle is like, even all of the rest of these commands are just kind of helping with the push or the pull. So we're either pushing our local code up into this cloud that I've put, um, or we're pulling whatever version is up there onto our local machine so that we can make our own changes and push them up and so on and so forth. Um, so in order to do that, um, we've seen that we need to do a few other things. Uh, so on our local machine, um, we know that we have to kind of check out a branch. Um, so we create our own branch, you know, Laura's issue number, whatever. Um, we check out that branch on our machine. So that's kind of the very beginning of the process. We make all of our changes, we do all of our edits. And once we're happy with it, um, we can do a git add. And this git add, it takes all of our files um, and packages them up and tells Git like, we're ready to, like these ones I'm happy with, we're ready to push them up, um, but it doesn't actually push anything yet. We also have to do a Git commit. Um, and while, like, while we're in this kind of process, I can do a Git add, add all my changes, and then go back to working and make more changes and then do a Git add. Then I can make more changes and I can do a Git add. And I can do the same thing with committing. I can make changes that I'm happy with, commit them, and then go back, make changes, get add, get commit, go back, make changes, get add, get commit. You can do these as many as, as many times as you want. Um, you don't have to do a get add every time that you change a file and then get committed and then push it. Um, so you can kind of bundle all of these processes together. Um, and once we've committed, that tells Git like, okay, we've got this code on the launch pad and like, we're gonna send it up to the cloud. So the analogy that I was always taught um, was like, it's like a rocket ship or whatever. <laughs> and your code is like sitting on the launch pad and then running the actual Git push is what sends it off to space um, and sends it over to this repo and lets you make a merge request. And at this point, once you've done this Git push, all of the stuff that you've done is now public. Um, other people within GitLab can see your changes, but all these things that you've done up until then um, making your own branch, adding, committing. This is just on your local machine. You can make branches named whatever you want and no one's gonna see them. No one's gonna, like you can test out stuff. And this is just like, just for your eyes only until you've actually pushed that code. Um, so I did add, I think I like merged it. I'm adding like a line of, of public knowledge. So this kind of is a private part. And then once you push it, it becomes public. Um, and then likewise, uh, as soon as you know you want to go and start a new project or you want 
Um, maybe Tyler has done something for me that I want to add into my branch. I need to pull that to my machine and merge it in with my changes. Um, so I can do a git pull. If Tyler has touched the same code as me, it's probably going to yell at me and say that I have conflicts. Um, and at that point, uh, I need to do a git rebase or a git merge. Here at GitLab, we're all about the rebase. It's very like rebase culture, which I had never really used before. Um, git merging and git rebase essentially should do the same thing. Um, merge tries to take code A and code B and make sure that they fit together. Um, rebase takes all the code A and plays it on top of code B. So if Tyler did changes, it'll like every commit he's made, it'll make on top of mine and it'll stop as soon as it hits a conflict and be like, which one of these did you want, A or B? Um, so they do the same thing. They just are. Some are better for certain processes, um, but I'm going to add git rebase or git merge here. Um, I should also note, I saw that Lauren uses git fetch. Um, that is very similar to doing a git pull. Uh, git fetch fetches the code from this, this cloud um, and then uh, notices that there are changes and then you have to also do a git merge with it. So git pull kind of um, combines git fetch and git merge. Let me see. Let me just... I ran out of space here. I should make my art more bigger or my frame bigger, but um, yeah. yeah. Get rebase. Uh, so all of those are like public changes um, that will help you get your local version back to normal. And then get status, I've left to the end because we can use this all the time. I'm just gonna like make a bunch of copies and like <laughs> get status everywhere all the time. All the time get status because it does tell you where where you are in the thing uh, that made it look very messy but um, yeah <laughs> you uh, get the idea um, so I'm gonna kind of clean this up a bit and leave it for you um, uh, so that you know if you ever want to refer back to this or whatever you can or feel free to clean it up yourselves um, and then I've made a little like it's quite a long wall of text but it should just be like um, kind of troubleshooting uh, if you do run into issues. Um, uh, so for this, uh, every time you start something new, you should get to a clean state on master. Um, so even where you are now, where you've done a merge request, um, but it was a few weeks ago, um, and there have been lots of changes to master since then, um, it's always a good idea to pull those changes. Um, so if you want to on your local machine, you can always do get pull, like just always keep that up to date. It'll save you from doing like huge pulls um, every couple of weeks. But again, if you're not using it that often, that's that's up to you. Um, but again, I always start with get status, see which branch I'm on. It, it says like on branch master or on branch Laura, whatever. Um, and if that's the case, I need to go to check out master. And if it gives me trouble and says like, you've got changes, what do you want to do with them? Um, get stash, will stash those changes. It saves them kind of on this local area in your computer. Um, and you can always pull them back uh, by doing a get stash pop. You would think it would be like get unstash, but it's not. Um, but yeah, this gets you to a point where you're able to check out master and then do a git pull. Um, and that'll grab those remote changes and merge them in with your local version of your, your repository. Um, this I've had to use more often than I'm proud of. It's like not a, not a good thing. Um, if you're in a state where like you're pulling and pushing and it's giving you errors a million times over and you just can't do anything and you don't know what the conflicts are, as far as you know, you haven't made changes, but it says you have or something. It, it just kind of gets in this weird state. Maybe a script has run that's changed something for you and you don't know which files have changed and you just want to undo it, just forget it. Um, get reset hard origin master. This does a like a hard reset. Um, it's exactly what it says, hard reset to the origin um, version, whatever is currently live in production. So whatever that, whatever the most recent working state is, um, it'll pull that and make that your local version. Um, so it's just kind of like a, you know, in emergencies use this thing. I've had to use it a few times since I've been here because I just kind of get stuck in these, you know, this merge conflict hell or something terrible is happening. And I've made two lines of code changes and I can just remake those changes later. I just need to get to a, a clean state. Um, and then making a merge request, which you all did um, I, a few weeks ago. Uh, I don't know what time is. Um, but yeah, always get status, check out a new branch, make your changes, and then get add, get commit, get push. And get push usually says like, you have to push where? Like you wanna push to this branch? And you're like, yeah, I do. Um, and then it makes the merge request and you're able to see your merge request in GitLab and make it all nice and, and get someone to merge it in. Um, 
So that's my like wall of text <laughs> that I have for all of you. Okay, okay, we have questions. All right, so uh, Tina, do you wanna? Yeah, I can vocalize my do questions. I think you kind of answered one, but I'm still unclear. I know that I can check out somebody's branch, but can two people be on the same branch and work off the same branch by accident or is there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this has happened a few times. It's kind of one of the beauties of Git. Um, this happened, for example, I don't remember one, um, but I know that I've made changes and then I get Brandon to review those changes. He's reviewed my merge request and something doesn't look quite right, but I don't know how to fix it. Uh, maybe something with cookie bot um so brandon can check out my branch so it's on his local machine he can see exactly what i've done um, and he can make changes and push them to my branch uh, so both of us are on that branch if we both make changes to the exact same file and we both push those changes that's when we get merge conflicts um it'll be like which one do you want to keep and one of us has to like undo our version like we just have to pick one or the other one commit to undo and one commit to to save um so yeah okay yeah the beauty of, of Git. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, again, some confusion between um, fetch and pull. It's yeah. a, a preference thing. I mean, um, it's uh, like, I always do a Git pull um, because it combines fetch and merge. Um, fetch does a check that there are changes and kind of holds them before pulling them into your computer. Like, it's like, there are changes. Do you want to merge them in? Or like, these are the files that have changed. Um, and they might mess up your file. Like if you merge them in, you might get conflicts or whatever. So some people like to do a fetch, see what's different between their version and the, the remote version, and then merge it in if, as long as they think it looks safe. Um, I like to do it all in one go, just pull it in. If there are merge conflicts, I'll deal with it later. Um, but I think it's, they both effectively do the same thing, um, the pull or fetch and merge. Um, so for the types of things that like the designers on our team would be doing probably don't need to review a fetch because we likely won't understand what we're looking at and a pull because we're just updating a handbook or doing a blog post or maybe a small like yeah yeah, yeah exactly i think um you know git can do a lot of this the heavy lifting and if you're making huge sweeping changes doing a git fetch first is is smart um but for the most part you know that the stuff that you're going to be working on is probably not going to touch other people's stuff especially if you're building something completely new like a whole new handbook page no one else is going to have ever touched that um so yeah, it's just yours to, to pull and make sure that you have the most recent version. Um, yeah, are there any other questions? I know we're not taking up the whole time. I just wanted to go over some visuals. Yeah, I like this. I like this because so far nobody's presented this to, to us this way. It's always been like, let's just go through code this way. And we're all um, the three of us four of us are designers. So this is a good way to see this. <laughs> oh, we're yeah, that's, visual learners. Yeah. That's that's same, same with me. I like I had learned this at I did a boot camp. Um, and it was, uh, you know, they kind of used that spaceship analogy. So it wasn't just arrows, they had like spaceships and stars and like, whatever, they had a very nice kind of way of teaching it. Um, but it's, it's very, very helpful to know where you are in this process. Um, when you're doing a good commit, like for me, um, I like to kind of fail privately. I know that that kind of goes against GitLab's values, but I like to test things out and play around on my local machine. And, and only when I know that things are like kind of crisp, uh, then I commit them. So it's nice to know exactly how much this process I can do privately um, before it goes publicly and could break something. And, you know, people are knocking on my door, like, what did you do? <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, yeah, um, that's all that I have. Uh, I will stop recording. Last last call for questions. Okay. Good. Bye, friends.